looking for their first, you know, real significant win of the season and trying to start the conference season 1-0. All right, let's take a peek at the other scores because it is the opening night of action here in 2024. So this game, Buffalo doubling up the Chippewas. Eastern Michigan trying to get a big win against Bowling Green. They had quite the non-conference play. That one down in the Stroh Center. Kent State up by 11 at home against Ball State. Toledo, how about that? Down in Athens up by 6. And then Western Michigan, they have struggled out of the gate, but... On the road down there in Oxford, up by three at the break. I tell you what, it's that Eastern Michigan one at the top, up by eight on the road against Bowling Green. BG, record-wise, the best non-conference slate out of anybody in the Mid-American Conference. Great effort there by the Eagles on the road to start conference play. And this is when it all starts, Adam. The sprint, the downhill sprint, two and a half months, 18 games. Who's going to be in that top eight headed to Cleveland? Midweek March. Yeah, that Bowling Green team, 9-3, and three, as you're mentioning. Seven straight victories in Eastern Michigan trying to pick up a big win. Okay, quickly, your thoughts. About 30 seconds before we get going in this second half. Let's start with Central Michigan. How does Tony Barbie's club get back into this game? Well, 0 for 12 from 3. I mean, it goes without saying. Got to knock down a couple outside shots. Would really go a long way to, to getting momentum on your side early in this second half. But, frankly, with the shooting performance in that first half, you got to go inside. Marcus Harding's been a non-factor here to start this game back in the lineup. Anthony Pritchard has tried to do a lot of it by himself, but Tony Barbie, no doubt, searching for answers in the locker room. For Buffalo, is it just as simple as, hey, do exactly what you did in the first half and put it together for 40 minutes is what Coach Halkovich was telling us pregame? Give it to Chapman and Sable and go to work. I mean, they combined <laughs> for 25 points in that first half. The freshman, Ryan Sable, five threes. We touched on him during the halftime break, but... Yeah, honestly, more of the same. Maybe take care of the basketball a little bit better. Limit those turnovers, double digits in the first half. Not exactly what you want. But uh, ultimately, you find yourselves with a big lead now. Can the first-year head coach hang on to it? Central Michigan's won three straight at home. Buffalo, they have dominated this series. They need 13 of the last 14. They have won 12 straight before the Chippewas ended that drought last year. Here. We will see if it stays status quo in the second half or the Chippewas find a way back in this game. Sable, he was the guy in that first 20 minutes. 15 points all from behind the arc. Looks for another one early. Ow, and it pops out. That was halfway down. Where does the offense come for for Central Michigan? It was all from Anthony Pritchard. 10 points. There were four other guys that scored. They all have just two. Inside they go to Harding, bangs and scores. Didn't know if he needed to go up and under like that, but able to finish at the rim and Marcus Harding, we touched on him a little bit in that first half. He's a guy that can really pay dividends for you offensively if he can get comfortable. And I think for Central Michigan, they're gonna have to get back in this game on this end of the floor. Inside it goes to Chapman. Adams squares for three. Pops out, and Harding grabs the board. So good start to this second half for CMU. Looking for another bucket. Basco dumps it. Harding, too strong, but there is a foul. And let's take a look. No, did they call a goaltend there? I think so. Checking it right here over the rim. Yeah, yeah. 22 points for CMU. Goaltend. That means a goaltend. Yep. Yes, sir. Good work by you. That's four straight for Harding. Chippewa's back to within 14. Vasco tries to tie it. Oh, they get him for a foul and one. Unnecessary reach in there on the backside by Caden Vasco. You're going to see it right here. Ryan Taylor doing a good job bodying, and then that reach in at the end doesn't do anything to alter the shot. And Chapman... Having himself another really good game. Starting to stack them for Buffalo. Every game this year, he has been in double figures, and he has led them in scoring in 11 of the 12 games. And he's leading them in scoring again tonight as he hits the free throw. 13 points. I should say second behind Sable, who's got 15. But those two have led the way through the first 20-plus uh, minutes. He is back to 17. Rubio almost had that one taken away. Chippewas trying to go inside with the struggles from deep. Beating Marcus Harding. Hook shot. 
Crawls off. And the rebound snaps down by guess who? Smith. He's got 13 boards. 6'9", 200-pounder has been excellent inside. Chip Wise haven't been able to match up with him. Knocked away by Pritchard. Stays with Buffalo. Well, with a deficit like that at halftime, you can point to a lot of things for Central Michigan that didn't go their way in the first half. But 10 turnovers for Buffalo, 4 points off of 10 turnovers for Central Michigan, just not doing a good job of capitalizing on those Bulls' mistakes. If they can turn them over close to that here in the final 20 minutes, you got to start scoring some points at the other end off of those. And the Bulls dominating on the boards, too, up plus 10. Inside Smith, Harding didn't see it, and Smith has an easy lay-in. Yeah, again, late in the shot clock, Simi does a good job for 25 seconds defending Buffalo, but Harding falls asleep on that roll, and that's an easy lay-in for Smith. Now the largest lead of the game for Buffalo. Richard Harding got bumps, and a foul was called on Smith. That's his second. Richard driving inside. It's a tough whistle there on Smith for Buffalo. Maybe just wrong place, wrong time. It almost looked like Marcus Harding just slipped. An inadvertent trip, it almost looked like. He got caught on the, on the big toe of Smith. It's unfortunate. Second on Smith. Taylor trying to attack him off the bounce. It does. Plus one. Yeah. Great job by Brian Taylor not being afraid to get physical and aggressive. Going right to the chest of Smith. A lot of contact as Taylor goes up. And Smith just has his hands up. He's not responsible for any of that contact. That's Brian Taylor simply drawing a foul and finishing. And that's what Central Michigan needs. They need number zero to be assertive. And the most assertive he's been tonight, he's got four. And quickly, the guy that's been killing him on the glass, Janivia Smith, has three fouls. So right back to a 16-point game. Sikwa's trying to implement a little full-court pressure here. Much space here for Sable. Pritchard doing everything he can, and he turns him over. Vasco going in, dumps it off. Taylor lays it in. Beautiful pass from the freshman. From our vantage point, I didn't know where that pass was going from Caden Vasco. He dropped it over his shoulder to nobody, but Brian Taylor trailing the whole way. Trying to get that momentum for Central Michigan. And Davis now with a rip away. Blocked from behind. Taylor cleans it up. Here come the Chippewas. Not even four minutes into this second half, CMU squarely back with momentum in their possession. And Coach Hal Halkovich, he wants a timeout. They were down by as many as 18, but the defense leading to easy offense. Davis can't get it on a great black, but Taylor able to clean it up. Live sports. Was looking for something similar. They've outscored the Bulls 11 to 5 to start this second half. See how the Bulls respond out of the timeout. Chapman lost his footing, but a foul is called. That's a bailout right there for Buffalo because the shot clock was late, but a trip on Chapman. One ending this is probably similar to that foul that happened at the other end of the floor. Smith picks up an unlucky third personal foul for Buffalo. Same goes for Central Michigan. Just wrong place, wrong time. So a fresh 20 up there. Buffalo hasn't scored in a couple of minutes. Looking to end that drought. Bolden unable to. Chip was looking to push. Anthony Pritchard had it knocked away. Dishes it to Rubio. Drops it in. Balloons to a 13-5 run. Can't ask for much more for the Chippewas coming out of the locker room. Down by 18, have cut it to 10. The energy has really revved up in this building. Davis gets caught with a reach in. We're going to go to a timeout here, but Central Michigan getting back into this one. Nice pass from one of the best assisters in the back, Anthony. 
couple fast break buckets, some easy looks at the rim. You just start to see things go well, and it can really fill yourself with some confidence, something CMU's been lacking for you know, almost three quarters now, or three halves. It's, it's been a struggle after that Loyola game to really get things going, and finally they've woken up here in the second half. And a 9-0 run here over the last two minutes. Buffalo trying to get a skid ender. Near turnover for Adams. Tough fadeaway oh, goal. Oh, wow. A bounce goes Buffalo's way on the deflected pass that could have easily been their 13th turnover of the night. Adams gets it back. Calm, cool, collected. Finish on the baseline. Now for Central Michigan. Can they answer that bucket? Rubio. Mm. Offensive foul called on Davis. Trying to set an off-ball screen to free up Rubio. Looked like it was going to be a good play. See Davis just trying to slide. He slide to the left and then... The defender goes on the other side, and Davis is out of position. At that point, you got to let him go. Mm. you got to recycle the basketball and try something else. And Davis picks up the personal foul, and if Buffalo, Buffalo can get a bucket here. They snatch momentum right back. We'll see how Central Michigan can stay defensively on this end of the floor, but you're exactly right. Fulcher and the Bulls looking for some momentum. Adams again? Not to be, but there's another offensive rebound. Buffalo seventh. No one picked up Sable. Fulcher to the cup. Scores. Good response again. Buffalo did it in the first half. They got out to an early lead. CMU threw a counter punch. The Bulls were, were able to withstand it. They're doing the exact same thing right now, five minutes into the second half. Where does Central Michigan go for offense? No Marcus Harding in the game. Brian Taylor, open three. Nothing is going in from the outside for CMU. They just can't buy one in their home gym from deep. Great take. Sable is open. Rebound Rubio. Pritchard, he's got a two-on-one. Up for Taylor. Lost his footing. And he's going to the free throw line. I say Adams is going, what did I do? I didn't touch him. I know, the Jacksonville native. We're going to see it here. Two-on-one, Pritchard throws it up. I mean, there is a little mm. contact on the leg there, but I don't know if that's more on Taylor not getting a good jump for that alley-oop attempt or if it's the pass on Pritchard. Either way, CMU catches a break, and they're perfect from the free throw line so far tonight. Five for five. Haven't been there much. And that's something you highlighted, Matt. That's been a struggle this year for CMU. They're shooting just 64% from the strike coming in. That's 11th out of 12 in the Mid-American Conference, but... That's something that it looks like they've gotten better at, at least over break. They struggled scoring the ball, but at the line, they've at least taken advantage of the opportunities. Ryan Taylor now into double figures. Misses the second. The so lead is 13 for the Bulls. It was as large as 19 in the second half. Simi would love to get it under 10. Open look. Bolden Jr. passes it up. Nice pass. The other side, Chapman has it blocked by Taylor. Harding hits the deck. It can't be a travel. Buffalo wants a travel. It's either a foul or a no call. Pritchard between the legs. Oh, pretty with the left. <laughs> <laughs> Little crossover at the perimeter. Catches his defender off balance, and that's an easy two. He is sneaky smooth getting to the cup. That's the first two for Pritchard in the second half. Right back to that 11-point margin. Fulcher, the blow-by. Wow, and he beats Vasco. I mean, that's just as good. You don't hear the oohs and ahs because it's a road game for Buffalo, but still creating his own separation out of nothing. Good finish. Everything has had to be to the basket for CMU. They're 0 for 13 from the outside. Pritchard will try and end the drought. Not to be. And a foul called on Chapman mm. on the rebound. CMU catches a break. He doesn't like it. He doesn't believe it. Harding back in the ball game. We've talked about it a little bit here tonight, Adam, though. First game back. Missed some time. He's been in and out of the lineup so far this season. And Marcus Harding is trying to get back into game shape, trying to provide whatever he can. He's been pretty good. Six points, five rebounds. He's had a couple of assists. Looking for two more. How about that nimble move from the big fella? 
back to this 11-point game. CMU hasn't been able to get it under 10 yet. Chippewas have been riding on this end of the floor with their defense. Fulcher, oh, well, maybe he wanted that step back. Good position and a mismatch. Chapman, good patience. Oh, but it crawled off. Late foul is called, though. Yeah, great position by Chapman and good entry there for Buffalo, realizing that he's got a, a major plus advantage down in the painted area. Doesn't get the initial one to go. He's thinking, I should have got a foul on the first one. Tony Barbie on the uh, other bench is asking for three seconds. Mm. He thought he was in the lane a little bit too long. Chapman with 13. How did that pop out? <laughs> Boy, 65% for the year, but he certainly looks good so far tonight. Was perfect up until that point and got the road roll there. Second one, all net. So he's got 14 points. Sable, the leader with 15, all came in the first half. They've done a much better job on him. And this is why this game has tightened up. The Chippewas have allowed just 12 points so far in the first eight minutes. Tightened up, yeah, but still, they're only plus six in the second half. Mm -hmm. It's still a double-digit lead for Buffalo. So all the good feelings CMU has to start this second half, we're almost at the midway point, and Buffalo's held serve. And here, this seems like a good move for the Bulls. Chippewas still have not made a three. They go into that zone defense. Taylor can't hit it off the fingers of Butler. This is when Central Michigan really got behind in the first half. They could not shoot themselves out of that zone look. Mm. Moving screen on Williamson. We're going to go the other way. So Central Michigan ball when we return. Down by 18 at the break. They've trimmed it to 12. Anthony Pritchard, how about this? A little cross between the legs. And I'll see you later. Bench there, but it's just six turnovers for CMU in the, uh, in the, in the game so far. Puppy snuck in here. Yeah. About Kirk, that. Ben's Kirk Herbstreit maybe <laughs> make an appearance. Or Does it look Kirk Herbstreit's Ben maybe behind the bench <laughs> making an appearance? Yeah, he looks just like him, a golden retriever. Great to have some four-legged friends around. 48-36 lead for Buffalo. Up top, Taylor stops, and he's fouled. That's one way to beat the zone. Right out of the timeout. Coming straight out of the huddle. And Chapman just trying to affect that shot any way they can. He notices it too late. Taylor in the air, contact with both hands. Brian Taylor's going to throw that thing down every time. Chance to get this thing under 10 for the first time since the first half. There it is. And a lot of this is because Brian Taylor, he's got 11 second half points, 48-39 Buffalo leads with 11-20 to play. And it's been Central Michigan's defense. They've been much better, and offensively, they're getting better looks, shooting nearly 65% from the floor in this second half. Yeah, a little. Derek Butler thought about trapping in the corner, but full court man to man pressure just to make Buffalo think about it a little more. You're not trying to get a steal or anything, just trying to shorten that shot clock a little bit once they get in the half court. Anquan Bolden Jr., the son of Anquan Bolden Sr., great NFL wide receiver, brought that up. No problem there, even with the pressure. Pritchard takes it away, though. One-on-one -on -one with Chapman, and he'll go in. Blocked. Chapman kind of lulled him to sleep. What a great play. Fulcher up ahead, and Chapman scores. He can plays at both ends of the floor. Fulcher get away with a walk on that drive to the basket, and just like that, in a span of 15 seconds, Buffalo takes the momentum right back. Pritchard thought that Chapman was going to let him just go in. That was a great play there by Chapman. That's a big four-point swing. Pritchard, oh, oh. somehow that got blocked into the bucket by Adams. Yeah, and I think Paul McMillan maybe gets away with a moving screen as well in, in the act. We're letting everything go here in the second half. We've got a lot of tempo up and down. You want some offense? Because we got some. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Keep the whistles quiet. Halfway through this second half. Oh, that one's knocked away. Chippewa's looking to run again. 
Veteran play right there by McMillan, the transfer into the program. Wants the entry into Harding. It's not there. Nothing wrong with using all 30 of the shot clock. It was trying to get closer. Butler, long two. Tapped back around, and somehow that went in. Marcus Harding. He'll get credit. I don't know if it goes off of his hand or not, but that's two baskets in a row for CNU where Buffalo maybe puts it in for him. You know, in soccer, they might call that an own goal. <laughs> Either way, it still counts for two, and it's down to seven. Ooh, foul call by Brian Taylor. The lead was 18 at the break. It ballooned to 19 early in this second half. It's both arms in front there. Brian Taylor just trying to body up Isaiah Adams, 6'6", 210 against 6'6", 205. Pretty good matchup inside. Luckily for Brian Taylor, just his first personal foul, so he's going to be involved in this one down the stretch. Now a quick hold on McMillan as he was trying to chase the three-point sniper, Ryan Sable. That's been one of the keys. Buffalo 0 for 5 from deep in the second half. They knocked down 6 in the first half. CMU in the meantime 0 for 15 from 3. And it's 1-1 one one for Buffalo the rest of the way. Okay. By the way, Central Michigan, they scored just 35 points against Buffalo last year in Western New York. That's a big miss. They didn't have any threes in that game either. But they've been doing it other ways here. Going to the cup. Pritchard got fouled. And he's going to the free throw line. Three were up in the air on that fake attempt. Well, and Sable at the other end, an 82% free throw shooter, misses the front end of a one and one. Turns into a whistle at the other end now. Both teams in the penalty. Going to have free throws the rest of the way. So I think we're going to be here a while. So settle in, partner. And now, who can knock down the free ones? Well, I didn't have anywhere to be anyway. I got to drive home. So do you. So we got to get there eventually. Got to work the next day, you know. Those are all future problems. Thinking about the sleep schedule. But love to see a, a tight one down the stretch here. How does Buffalo respond, right? They've led this entire game. Chapman just picked up his third, too. Okay. And Pritchard. Calm and cool. As you mentioned, CMU's been really good at the line. Now 9 for 10, and all of a sudden, we got a five-point game. Chippewa storming back here in the second half. Adams, great move. Yeah. Nice his way for two. I think he leaps from outside the painted area at one end, and then he just glides across the logo. Excellent finish with their big-time scorer now on the bench. Chippewas have been efficient, though, at this end. 27 second-half points. The first 11 minutes, Davis wide open, nothing going for three, but Butler tracks down the long miss. Hard to believe, seeing you can't hit one from deep. Pritchard, tough take. Don't want to get tunnel vision, because you're leading scorer, but at the same time, you're your primary ball distributor as well. So you got to make sure you're doing what's right by the offense. Davis doing a good job checking on the perimeter. Chippewa's moving their feet. Bulls doing a nice job moving the basketball. Adams wants it over in the corner. Nothing doing right now for the Bulls. Sable in trouble. Three seconds to go. Golden with one. Beats the horn. Oh, that is a backbreaker, but they're going to check it. I think he got it off. They're going to look at it, though. And see, wants this out of his hands. Oh, that is so close. All right, we'll check in when we return if that one is going to count. But it's tightened up right now, a nine-point game. And in time. Yeah, barely, but the refs reviewed it at the break. By the sliver of a fingernail, it counts, and the first-year head coach trying to get his first Mid-American Conference win on the road. Pretty cool to have Anquan Bolin Sr. in the house. You and I, Lions fans, he spent a year in Detroit, and oh, yeah. uh, you won a Super Bowl. You win the highest level in college basketball, made it to three Pro Bowls, and uh, now gets to watch his son play for the Buffalo Bulls. Yeah, and getting a lot of PT and hitting big shots in conference play. Can't ask for much more watching... Your son play at the highest level. Momentum was on the side of Central Michigan, but back-to-back -back buckets by Buffalo. 
It's got this thing back to nine. Chippewas haven't been able to do anything from the outside, so working in the paint. McMillan trying to attack, he got pushed. He's, he's gonna go to the free throw line. Be a big foul call right here with 7.44 left. They go with Sable. They catch a break there. Yeah, that was Adams reached in there. Could have been his fourth. You're exactly right. Got three guys with three personal fouls for Buffalo right now. Chapman, Smith, and Adams. This is a big one right here. McMillan just a 60% shooter. First time at the line tonight. And he gets a kind bounce and then a long roll. They all count the same, right? Yeah. Home gym. Know just the right amount of English to put on that one. And he's thinking, let's get a little more net here on this one. Yep, that's that's what he was looking for. Yeah. Two points for McMillan, his first two tonight. Back to a seven-point margin. A lot of time left. And CMU's thinking, well, we should have had this effort in the first 20 minutes. It'd be a lot closer. Challenge there by Harding, and Chapman spills to the floor. Chapman just runs right into him. I don't know what he's thinking. He's not going to jump from the logo and dunk over top of Marcus Harding. Oh. It's a big boy you're trying to go through, and maybe Chapman's thinking free throw line the entire way. It's the risk right there of the press. Great job by Buffalo to find Chapman in transition. He's now leading the way, 17 points. Hi, Chapman talked about it. He's been in double figures every game. Four double-doubles on the season, including the one he just had, 29 points, 13 boards. He's got 17, four, two assists, three blocks, a steal, doing everything he can tonight trying to get Buffalo. Their first win in their last 10 tries. Yeah, a 65% free throw shooter. Knocking them down tonight. Buffalo has lost nine straight games. Their lone win is against a D2 opponent. But they look like a different team tonight. Optimus from Butler tries for three. An air ball for Butler. And Central Michigan is 0 for 17 from the outside. It's pretty wild. I mean, you'd think one of them would go down. They're getting good looks. Yeah. I, I, I would mean, say half of them have been what you would consider a good look from three. And they've gone begging in a multitude of ways. Here's the same thing again. Chapman into Harding. Nearly got it. But it's the full court press. And then it's an immediate two on one. Great press break here by the Bulls over the last couple of possessions. Yeah, Buffalo is, is not finding it very difficult. See how long CMU sticks with that press. I know they're trying to make life difficult for the Bulls, but your trap does you no good if the inbounds pass is going past half court. And I think the best recipe for Central Michigan defensively is making Buffalo earn it in the half court. That's where they've struggled, I'm giving them easy looks at the bucket here by not having your guys back in transition on the full court press. Fourth straight 20 point game for Chapman. Mm. And this thing is back up over 10. Yeah, and Tony Barbie said pregame he was worried about Chapman and the impact that he'd be able to have tonight. And boy, was he right. Zone defense for Buffalo. Up pass for Harding. McMillan tries the three. There, finally, the Chippewas get their first long ball. And he puts his fist up into the air thinking, finally, maybe the dam has been broken and we'll get a couple to go in. Does the lid start to open up? And this, the Chippewas have been good on this end of the floor in the second half. Buffalo trying to shoot their way out of it. Sable's been shut down in the final 20. Mm. Nice bump from Bolden, and the attack, put back by Chapman. Guys everywhere, 22 points, 5 rebounds, 3 blocks, he's everywhere. Because of that, it's a 10 point lead again. What a performance on the road here from Cy Chapman, the first year transfer from Illinois State. Mellon almost threw it away. Harding trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Smith, using the big body and succeeding. Smith doesn't want to pick up his fourth foul with six minutes left. 
He's been an animal on the glass, but just six points, and Marcus Harding trying to take advantage of that inside. Buffalo, though, keeping Central Michigan from coming back because they're doing it on this end. Five of their last six from the floor have gone in. Chapman again. Pops out. Taylor boards. Numbers if you go quickly. Richard looking at it. Attacking. Tough take. And a late whistle. Nails him out there. Going to the line for two. 5.30 to go. And this thing just keeps getting tighter and tighter. Little push there I don't from see Bolden. A lot. I don't see a lot. I think that's a tough luck whistle there on Bolden Jr. But Pritchard earns it by getting out in transition. At the end of that play, not really numbers. It's probably three on three in that fast break. And Pritchard doing a good job getting to the rim and earning that trip to the free throw line despite a 50 50 whistle. But doesn't mean anything if you can't knock him down. What's that? Uh, an old player, Rasheed Wallace, what, what's he saying? The ball doesn't lie. <laughs> yep. Somewhere he's smiling. Mm -hmm. Somehow that saying has stayed true all these years. Pritchard will get one more. Just a second miss from the strike, by the way, for CMU. They're 11 for 13. And really good at the line. Split the pair. 17 for Pritchard. Lead sits at 7. Chippewas have been as close as five in this second half. Trailed by 18 at the break. Davis trying to take that one away. Buffalo is looking for another easy one out of the transition. Just over five minutes to go. Tough take. Chapman partially blocked. Oh, a late whistle is called. So same thing we just saw on one end. We get it here on this end. It goes against Davis. You see here, we got... Bodies up everywhere, going for the block. Davis grabs the rebound, and CMU's trying to get an outlet pass to get out and run. Not much. Just like the other end, didn't see much on that last one. Wasn't a ton there. Chapman gets the bounce. 23 points after he just had the career high, 29. What a scorer this guy is. Sat out last year as a red shirt. And now in his long season with Buffalo. He's putting them on their back in this game. Man. Really coming into his own from the free throw line too. Yes he is. 10 for 11 at the strike. And he is scoring all of their points pretty much in this second half. Ones have cut the lead in half, but that's not going to get the job done. Trying to get even closer. McMillan. Nice floater. He's got seven second half points. Buffalo wants CMU to shoot it from the outside. Paul McMillan's the only Chippewa to knock down a three today. So he knows that, utilizes the pump fake, and then finds an open look from about 16 feet. Tough take, and a whistle there on Vasco. And right back to the line, it's Isaiah Adams. CMU at this point now into the double bonus for Buffalo CMU is trying to play physical defense doing everything they can Vasco the latest trying to get that jump ball CMU's got the possession arrow and neither team missing at the strike Buffalo's been great as well 10 for 12 each team bottom of the half uh, bottom half of the lead coming in and free throws but not the case tonight as we're opening up conference play Give a lot of credit to this young Buffalo team. Seven newcomers, third most true freshman in the MAC, with five and facing a nine-game losing streak, looking for their first win against the D1 opponent to try and get Coach George Halkovich his first victory against a D1 opponent, and maybe saving the best for conference play. Richard in the lane. Knocks it down. Smooth jumper. Both teams scoring really well. Just trading buckets, though. Buffalo's doing it from the free throw line. CMU's getting twos. They need stops without fouls. See what Buffalo goes to here. you got to imagine they attack. As you mentioned, they've been crushing it at the strike. 
and they're in the double bonus. There's a steal from McMillan. Bullet trying to track him, and he does. Rubio misses the lay-in, and a foul is called. Wow, multiple times tonight, <laughs> the Chippewas have been tracked down. But Central Michigan has closed the gap to make it seven. This their first three for Paul McMillan. Maisie's looking for a couple free throws from Central Michigan. I'm trying to get her some applause here in the break. The fans yeah. were biting on it. I mean, we got a we got a dog in the house. Got four legs instead of two. Come on, two is better than two is four is better, better than, two. than two. There we go. Come on, dog's better or man's best friend. We can't talk. No, that's all right. Good game though. Three fifty-eight to play. Sixty-four fifty-seven. Free throws have been good, but Rubio to the line for the first time. Not to be. Central Michigan has been as close as five. Rubio trying to get it to six. Buffalo has pretty much led the entire way. All for two at the strike. Those are big, big misses right there from Aiden Rubio. Easy to make shots from the free throw line when you're playing with a six, seven, eight point lead. When you're trying to cut into a lead, they're, they mean a little bit more and they're tougher to make. In Rubio, missing two big ones. Deep three. Adams no good. Chip was clear. And the half-court defense seems he's been good when they haven't fouled. That's allowed them to get back into this game. Pritchard, he's been excellent. McMillan has come on as well with seven second-half points and hit Central Michigan's only three in 18 attempts. Pritchard tries for the second. Nope. McMillan tries for the board. We've got a scramble. Possession favors Central Michigan. Any fouls in there? Nope, they're going to get... A possession, tie-up, keep it with CMU. And Pritchard, they run that for him. Hasn't made one from three tonight. Paul McMillan, the guy on the floor in the pink shoes, the only one to knock one down from the outside for Central Michigan tonight. And luckily for them, they had the arrow. But now in crunch time, it switches over to Buffalo. So if they can get a tie-up, they'll retain possession. That would have cut it to four. This place would have erupted. They tried to... Bring the energy here in the second half to get Central Michigan back into it. They have down by 18 at the break, but Buffalo has staved off the runs. Taylor, that's a tough take right there, and the rebound out to Sable. So two missed free throws, a couple of missed opportunities. On looks for the Chippewas, and this thing stays at seven. Buffalo looking for a huge win to open up conference play. Adams dumped it off to Chapman instead. Mismatch here. Smith on the smaller McMillan. Adams drives, pull up, got it. Big time shot. I thought early in the possession they were going to launch from three and it was going to be ill-advised. No reason to not use a lot of that shot clock. They do so. Great sharing of the basketball. Bulls one step closer. McMillan tries again. Nope. And Buffalo looks like they're getting closer here. 2.20 to play in Mount Pleasant. What a shocker this would be. Nine straight losses for the Bulls. Adams popped out, but an offensive rebound. Chapman had it blocked, though. McMillan looking to push. Attacking. Hits the deck. No call on the rebound to Chapman. Neither team scoring. Chippewas have been scored in two and a half minutes. And we are under two minutes to play in Mount Pleasant. Yeah, got to slow it down. Go with under 10 on the shot clock and try and get a good look. Sable has not scored in this second half. And that continues, but Smith gets another O board. Shot clock didn't reset. Taylor gets the pull on it. Taylor for three. Nothing. And a rebound cleared by Adams. Up ahead come the Bulls. Smith. Pull it out and run some clock, right? Instead, Smith, good patience, and two more. And that may be just about it. Buffalo up by 11 with just over a minute to play. Love the passing. Smith, patient underneath. And Buffalo, after three empty trips in a row and two missed free throws from Central Michigan, they've had every single chance to cut into this lead. And... 
They have not been able to find an answer offensively. Shooting under 35% tonight, despite a much better effort offensively in the second half. The Bulls have had the responses that they've needed. Bad time for Central Michigan to go scoreless over three minutes, and these have been the struggles, Matt. Pretty good looks tonight from three, but pretty much nothing going in. Central Michigan one for 21. I mean, you're looking at these, they're good looks, and this has been a pretty good shooting three-point team. Central Michigan just knocked down 10 a couple of games ago. That was right here in McGurk, but nothing is falling. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've done a good job of working into open looks, but... One of 21 from three. You almost think that you were surprised they've been able to stay within 11 like this. And CMU thinking they were going to right some wrongs from over the weekend before the New Year's Eve holiday in Chicago. And Buffalo has had other ideas. It's been a much better second half output for CMU. 39 second half points instead of the 18 in the first 20 minutes. But give credit to Buffalo. They've had 30-plus points in both halves. Rubio, there gets the second three. Buffalo also has not scored over 70 points in their last nine games. They're two away from doing that. Here's, again, a good look. Finally won that balls. Well, and Chippewa fans are thinking, now they go in, you know, <laughs> to get a couple more of those throughout the game. And... This one looks a little differently, but how about the effort from Buffalo? I mean, you think about first-year head coach Adam mentality coming in. You've only won one game this year. You're going on the road to start conference play in a building. Students aren't back yet. What type of atmosphere are you going to have? You want to try and create your own momentum, create your own energy on the road. and. I think, you know, Buffalo's got to be super happy with the effort. 40-minute performance, some blips on the radar a little bit defensively from Central Michigan in the second half, but all in all, Buffalo's been able to withstand the pressure. Yes, they have. They have not looked like a young team that, again, has not won a basketball game against a D1 opponent this year, but they are playing great. Central Michigan will head out to Ball State, and Eastern Michigan won't get easier, right? I mean, you can't win at home. Unless they have something to come back here in the final 65 seconds. Now you got to go out on the road against two teams before you come back against Kent State. That's going to be a tough game. That's why this one was so important. you got to protect home court, especially against a team that's struggling. But Buffalo has dominated this series, winning 13 of the last 14. And what a big one this would be if the Bulls can hang on here. Yeah, and for that schedule, you know, you start with a home game, back-to-back -back road games, and then you get three Ohio schools. The MAC has been considered an Ohio conference in recent years, so that's the that's the powerhouses of this league that are going to be on your schedule coming up. A foul called on Taylor. We're going to go to the free throw line for Chapman. That lone win for Buffalo, it came back on November 15th against Roberts Wesleyan. That's a Division II school, and the Bulls... He won 89 to 83. And the significance of the 70 point marker, he had scored under 70 in nine straight games. They could potentially break that with Chapman here at the free throw line. That is something that Buffalo hasn't done in a nine game stretch in 25 years. You have to go back the last time they had nine straight games with under 70 points. And again, Chapman, a chance to get them that number right now. What a game this guy has had. Streak officially broken, and it looks like another streak might be broken here in about 64 seconds. One. McMillan for three. Hits another one. Timeout, Tony Barbie. Chip was not going away. You got to give him a lot of credit. It's a seven-point game now. And did Central Michigan take a timeout, or are they looking at this one? And yeah, we've got a foot clearly behind yeah, the line. Definitely a three. We're going to have to figure this out. John Floyd is the one on your screen right now, and he's giving out orders, taking a look at a couple things. And 
making sure Buffalo's not substituting during the whistle. Paul McMillan had his hands on his head. I think he was in disbelief about something, but as far as we know, that three's going to count, and it's a seven-point game. And I think that's what the timeout was, was just they wanted to check it. But, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't anything close. Maybe just missed it or didn't see it as well. The only other thing I could think of is we're looking for another foul off the ball somewhere, which that could lead to, to some other free throws potentially. But we've got a screen here by Harding. Paul McMillan pulls up from three. We're about yeah a foot behind the three-point line. And clear his day. Yeah, yeah. Just checking the clock. Just making sure everything's good to go. With the shot clock and the game clock, we're all square. Yes, sir. Game Buffalo. one for everybody. Yeah. Buffalo's going, can this game just end? We want to be in the win column. But Central Michigan, give them credit, hadn't hit any threes all day. They've knocked down three here in the last couple of minutes. Two from McMillan, one from Rubio. And it's really been close in this 11 to 6 or 7 point margin for the majority of this second half. Chippewas came out, good energy, got it closer, but the Bulls have had the answers, and they've done a lot of damage at the free throw line, 14 for 16. Chippewas looking for a turnover. Davis reads it. Oh, what a rip oh, away from Smith. Oh, my goodness. It was going up in double coverage there to bring that one down. CMU bench wants to travel. Let's take a look here. Davis is trying to come over from the other side. One, two, three, maybe. You could argue that was a travel, but... It's all in the referee's eyes of when that pivot foot is established. Is that first foot down, once he's corralling that pass, is that his pivot foot? CMU has an argument there, but ultimately, it's up to Smith to knock down the free ones. 74% shooter. Smooth. And also, when did they call the foul there, too? It would be dependent on if he moved that pivot foot. But wow, just for him to catch that, Davis was lurking. He, yeah. he was playing free safety right there. They've seen that pass come up the middle a couple of times and it led to a two on one but it's still Davis unable to get there in time and Smith the big fella 10 points and that extends the lead back to nine closing in on getting coach Halkovich his first Mac win and his first drive and he is 50 seconds away that coaching staff Matt Pench they have to be thrilled through everything that they have faced here to open up his first year. I mean, you go back to November, Hofstra, Louisiana, Iona, James Madison, St. Bonnie's, Butler, Western Kentucky, Richmond, and then home against Niagara in their last game Friday, up by 10 at the break, and they lose that one. Those all losses, and boy, it would all go away with a 1-0 start in conference play. No stranger to droughts on the basketball court in this state. The Detroit Pistons ended theirs not too long ago, and Buffalo going to try and come in here on the road, start 1-0, and and then you start thinking big picture. What does this mean for our conference season? Yes, indeed. Remember, this Buffalo program is a proud one. Four NCAA tournaments recently in five years. McMillan has that one blocked by Smith, but a foul is called. I mean, they... Just changed coaches, and Coach Halkovich comes in, but it wasn't long ago that Bobby Hurley got them turned back in the right direction, and Nate Oates, who was on his staff, then started to win big before he left for Alabama. They're the only MAC team to win the MAC tournament four times in a five-year span in 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2019. So again, it's not been a long time since... They were the class of this conference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know you're personally a big fan of Nate Oates' programs, the way they play, real hard defensively, great rebounding, athletic, and shoot the basketball from the outside. He's done really well at Alabama. and Great head coach at Round Lewis High School here down in the Detroit area. 100%. He's a yeah. Midwest guy out of Wisconsin. Now you've got a first-year head coach who's trying to build his program first chance to be a head coach here at Buffalo and always have had a lot of talent, the Bulls, with their programs, and maybe this is the start of something else. Maybe we're going to forget about these 11 losses and we're going to look back and think, man, we underestimated Buffalo, but maybe they learned a lot of lessons in November and December. Well, it's looking like it right now, and you got to give them a ton of credit because they were up by 18 at the break. 
You knew that Central Michigan was going to make a run. Trying to protect their home court. Got it back to as close as five. And the Bulls have had the answer every single time the Chippewas have come at them. Smith is not afraid to talk to the crowd either. He shushed the band earlier on his last trip. He blew a kiss to the crowd. Now he's talking to the folks courtside here. He's got himself a great double-double. 11 points, 15 rebounds. And he waves so. goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See you later. Half a minute before this one becomes official. That's thrown away. And Buffalo can pretty much run the clock out if they choose. See if CMU wants to foul. Doesn't look like they're going to. This is why we love Mid-American Conference basketball. You just never know what's going to happen. It is not easy to win on the road in this league. But the skid for the Bulls is over. Nine straight won't become ten. Welcome to the Mac, George Halkovich. He gets his first win.